Welcome to Gridbusters. So what we're going to be doing today is getting everything ready for putting up two strings of solar panels on the back of our house. Now, the thing is, we've never, well, I've never installed solar panels on a roof that has tiles. Luckily, Jude, our builder, he's a, a roofer by trade, so uh, he's okay with tiles. However, it is quite a tall roof, and we put the, the scaffolding tower up here. You can probably see it in the background there. And uh, I've noticed that it is actually a lot taller than um, the roof on the barn. We've actually had to put an extra section uh, on the actual scaffolding tower. So it's a much, much higher roof. So that's going to be interesting. Now we, we've taken off 13 panels off the uh, roof of the barn. And uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, putting those on uh, the back of the house. And I actually wanted two strings of seven. So I've ordered an extra solar panel. You can only actually order them in pairs. So I've actually had to order two solar panels, but they're so cheap solar panels. I'll use the extra panel as a spare panel or maybe for a different project. Um, and I've ordered all the brackets and screws and nuts and bolts and everything else that we need. Um, so the first thing before we even think about putting solar panels on the roof here is we need to actually strengthen the structure of the roof because this, this house here is many, many hundreds of years old. Uh, now the good, th good news is we actually do own the house next door as well, which is our guest house and there's no skylights on that side of the roof. So I think we're gonna be putting the panels more on that side of the roof. We're gonna put them very, very high up towards the ridge, to, towards the very, very top of the roof. We've got a lot of space there. However, we don't have enough space between the chimneys to get 14 panels. So we're gonna have uh, one, one string of solar panels uh, seven panels, almost not quite touching the other chimney, but probably about a meter or two off the other chimney, and then another string directly underneath that, uh, so it doesn't uh, go anywhere near that um, uh, that skylight. But before we do that, we need to strengthen the roof uh, to give it a bit more structural strength. Uh, not that we're worried about the the weight, it's more about the lifting force because we get a lot of weather coming down this uh, hill here in the winter, a lot of wind. So we have to protect the roof from um, uplift, from being pulled off. So let's go into the attic and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So Jude and I are up in the loft and we've started work uh, with strengthening the roof. So let me just show you what we're doing. So you can see this section of wall here has, uh, I don't know what happened to it, fell out, never got finished, <laughs> something happened to it. Um, but yeah, I just thought before we even start putting stuff on the roof, let's get that, you know, fixed. So, yeah, so we're going to put some um, cement. We're not going to use lime or anything. We need, we need the strength of cement. So we've got a, a non-sandy, well, it's not sandy, but it's a, a, a very cement, lots of cement in it, hopefully, uh, mix. Yeah, <laughs> strong mix. Strong mix. Strong mix. So watering it, putting some water down first so that the uh, cement, so the stonework doesn't pull all the moisture out of the cement. And then we've got some uh, concrete blocks which we're going to put in. Again, because we need, we need the strength. And then through here, so the panels, let me just show you. So our um, house next door, the guest house is actually through there, which is bricked up. So the solar string is actually going to come across here and probably just to the other side of this wall here. Doesn't have to look pretty as long as it's functional. <laughs> Absolutely, as long as it's strong. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, you can see the you know these these buildings. I mean, it's um, you know this is this has been like this for yeah you know, probably a hundred years or something, and it's fine. But you can see there's like big gaps up here. I mean, this is something which. I definitely, at some point, would like to get all filled in here. Um, 
So yeah, it's never really been finished off. So this is yeah, something which we might do. I think it would be nice to get uh, this wall sorted out on the other side eventually. I probably won't do that right now, but I think it's on the list of things to do. But uh, yeah, it's not, it's not good having gaps like that. So at least we are sorting the wall out on the other side, which is actually much worse. And that's the side where we're gonna have the solar panels. It doesn't have to look pretty because we only use this, uh, we don't even use this, this loft for storage, so it's used for nothing. Uh, it's used for insulation, <laughs> that's it. So yeah, that's why we're using concrete blocks, pretty much concrete blocks, stone, anything that we can find, we we'll just shove in there as long as it's strong. So we finished uh, strengthening the wall here. Doesn't have to look pretty, just has to be strong. And then what we've done at the top here, we've tied in a beam there, brought that down. Let me just go around the side so you can kind of see what we've done here. And then that comes all the way around here. It's bolted into the purlin here and then comes, and it gives us a little bit of strength for uplift for the actual wall itself. So uh, yeah, and then over here, we've done pretty much the same thing. Um, that wall doesn't look very stable, but it is actually pretty stable. Um, but yeah, we've, we've bolted that through, connected it into these oak beams down here, and then tied into the purlins here on the roof, uh, which will give it, uh, you know, stop the roof lifting off if there's a gale. Plus we've done the same on the other side of this wall. So that's what we were doing here, but the real fun happened next door in the guest house attic. And we, uh, the trouble with old, old houses is you start lifting things up, you start having a look and you run into all sorts of problems. So we ran into a few problems, things that we had to fix now in the attic next door. Um, so I'm just gonna go and grab a work light because we don't have any skylights in the loft next door. Um, and I'll show you exactly uh, what the problems we had were. So this part of the guest house was originally blocked off. Um, this attic space was actually bricked up. No one had been up here for years. And when we got the house about 10 years ago, we actually had to knock a hole in the wall in a hallway upstairs to actually gain access to this old attic space. Um, but yeah, you can see it's all much older than the other part of the house. Um, so obviously we've done some work up here since. So first of all, what we did was we we put some timber work in there and secured it into these oak beams, which go right the way into the wall there. And that's really just to hold the roof down. So that's the first thing we did, which is pretty much on the other side of that wall I just showed you. And then we come into, the thing is we could convert this attic, but we've got so much space in this house that we actually don't need the space. So we came to this wall here and Jude and I were up here and it was pouring with rain and water was actually pouring down this wall. And we d you don't actually notice in the house when there's a leak because the floor is made of earth. It's about a foot thick or 30 centimeters of cob compacted earth. So if there is actually a small leak, you don't actually notice in the house because it just soaks into the earth and eventually it evaporates. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. It's a good insulator anyway, the earth. Um, so yeah, it was, a, it was a big problem. So Jude had to just spend a couple of days up on the roof and we actually had to completely chip out all of the old mortar around the chimney because this is actually the chimney stack here. So let me just go and show you. So this wall here is the chimney stack and then the chimney is up there. So we had to Jude chipped all of the mortar off around the edge of the chimney and we put new mortar in before we could actually even do anything. Uh, so that was 
something we weren't intending to do. Plus, when we had a look at this wall, there was a, you can, you can just probably see the new cement there. There was a massive gap. These purlins here weren't actually sitting on anything on either side, actually, um, on that side as well, and on that side. So when it was windy, you could actually see the roof moving a little bit, which is probably why the render around the edge of the chimney cracked. Um, so yeah, so now we've, you know, these walls are about a meter thick, several feet thick. So a huge amount of stonework went into these walls. And let me just go around the other side so you can see. Uh, here we go. But yeah, so it doesn't look like there's a lot of stonework there, but when you consider how thick these walls are, you know, so I was carrying up buckets and buckets of stone. Jude was, um, you know, he's very good at doing block work and stuff like that. So he repaired that. And, the, and then we had to do the same on the other side. And then we've just put a beam on each side, which is really just tying the roof together. So um, we're not going to have any panels coming out this far, but we just thought we might as well strengthen the roof while we were here. But yeah, with these old buildings, you never know what's going to be thrown at you when you start doing work on them. So uh, yeah, that was a little bit of um, work we weren't expecting to do. We spent a couple of days doing that, and uh, but it's, um, it's all strengthened now. We didn't film it just simply because it's so dark in this, in, in this section of the barn. I'm actually having to use a torch here, like a flashlight, just to film this. Uh, so it would have been a bit awkward filming it, really. Um, but yeah, anyway, we, we've got everything pretty much structurally sound now. We're happy. <laughs> so we can now move on to putting the panels actually on the roof itself. We had a few questions, actually. Uh, one person in particular was asking, where in France do we get our solar equipment from? And the company is here, Allo Solar. Uh, they've got a great website. I'm not being paid by them or anything. <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> so if you're in France, check them out. They've got a great website. And uh, that's where we've got all the Victron equipment from. That's where we've got the solar panels from, the racking. We didn't get the batteries from Allo Solar. We got all of that from China. Um, but yeah, so that's where we got the solar panels. However, the first time ever they messed up, but they were very good in fixing it. So. We did a big order with, with them uh, a couple of weeks ago to get all the solar racking for uh, the roof on the back of the house and all the brackets and screws and bolts and special attachments to attach it to a tiled roof and nine more solar rails. And I thought, well, whilst I'm there, I might as well order an extra solar panel. Now, annoyingly, you can't buy one solar panel. They only sell them, I think minimum order is two, but they're only like 69 euros each. So I just ordered two and I'll use the other one Maybe on a separate project, I've got, got it in my head, I might build a little really small micro solar system for my greenhouse. So I've got electricity down there for an irrigation system and things. So I might just save that for another project. So we had the two solar panels delivered and all the brackets and the guy just sort of dumped off all the stuff here on the patio and we signed for it. We were like really busy. We, you know, our hands were full of cement and we were doing the, um, doing the attic at the time. And he drove off and then we realized, hang on a minute, there's no solar rails. Uh, we're meant to have nine solar rails. So I contacted Allo Solar on their help desk and I got an amazing response back from them. I was so impressed with it. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. They were so apologetic, said, you know, suggested what it could be and they were right on top of it. And then I realized, hang on a minute, this is probably just written by AI. It's, I find it quite annoying when you get these things these days and then you realize actually, hang on a minute, this is too well written. It's, this, this response is too long, it's from AI. So I was really deflated. So I, I contacted them a couple of days later and the long story, long short of the story is they are delivering the nine solar rails today. So the original delivery was on Tuesday, it's now Friday and apparently the delivery company is supposed to be delivering the extra solar rails today. So fingers crossed, because if the solar rails are delivered today, you know, weather permitting, we'll be starting work on Monday, uh, installing those solar panels on the roof uh, at the back of the house. So it's now about two o'clock in the afternoon. Hopefully, you know, we don't normally get deliveries over lunchtime, so hopefully in the afternoon sometime, we should have the extra solar rails. And then in the next video, we can start putting the, these two strings of seven panels on the back of the house. Now, a couple of you did comment on the fact that Jude was not wearing a safety harness. Um, I think somebody commented, Sarah gloves and safety harness, Jude nothing. And um, Jude and I were both up on the roof uh, day before yesterday. 
and it's very, very high, this roof, much higher than the barn. And uh, I said to Jude, are you sure you don't want a safety harness? I said, look, I will buy you a safety harness. And he looked at me and we really both realized that we're gonna be handling these heavy solar panels, trying to get them up to the top of the roof and it's very, very high up. Yeah, how are we gonna do it? We don't have solar rails to climb up. Uh, we've, we've got roofing ladders, but that's all. I've actually had to order a roofing ladder so that we've got two roofing ladders. So it's gonna be very, very difficult. So Jude looked at me and said, yeah, okay. So I've actually ordered uh, Jude also a safety harness, which actually hasn't arrived yet. So that should be here hopefully tomorrow. Um, so we will both have proper PPE, hopefully. Um, and then hopefully in the next video, we'll be able to start cracking on with um, putting, mounting the solar panels to the roof. Now, if you've got any questions, anything uh, you'd like clarification on, also, what inverter should I be using? Most of you think I should use a Victron uh, inverter. Some of you think I could use a grid tie inverter. Let me know your thoughts on that. Um, yeah, so uh, I'd, be, I'd really like to hear your opinion on, on inverters. What, what, uh, so not inverters, what am I saying? Charge controllers. What charge controller should we be using? I haven't purchased one yet. I could get, get a Victron. Um, so I, I could go with Victron again, or I could go with something else. So uh, let me know uh, what you, you think. It's going to be 14 panels. So it's quite a lot. Um, but yeah, so uh, thank you so much for, <laughs> uh, for watching. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. Do comment on the video. I read all your comments and uh, it really does, um, you know, get, after I read your comments, it, it inspires me to make more videos for you guys. So uh, please do comment and like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.